It's Brad's Laboratory. Today in the lab, I'm going to be swapping out the trimmer potentiometers in my Harbor Freight 9 function metal detector. There are two cheap trimmer potentiometers in the detector. I think it will be a good upgrade to bump these up in quality and accuracy. I want to replace less than single turn potentiometers with some good quality 10 turn potentiometers. I have reverse engineered the circuit and found the values of the trimmer potentiometers. I have chosen a nice Burns 10K unit to replace the RV11 and 100K for the RV21. These look like twins but are different values. I'm not going to go into the disassembly in this video. I covered that in mod number one video. Uh, click on the link or look in the description for this video if you need to know how to disassemble the unit. Since the last mod video, I have also added some cables and connectors that I salvaged out of an old printer. These are not required, but since I am using this detector as kind of a test platform, it makes it easier for me to remove the board when I want to make a modification or measure a voltage or waveform. So just keep that in mind when my board has connectors and different cables hanging off of it than yours does. Next I prepared the new potentiometers by soldering the wires onto the leads. I also added heat shrink to cover the connections. I used colored wires to help me identify which lead is which. This wire was also salvaged out of the printer that I talked about earlier. I found it best to use flush cutters to remove the old potentiometers from the board. Just cutting them right off the board. This gets them out of the way and then I can use solder wick to remove the solder and the remaining potentiometer pin. Doing it this way I was able to reduce any chance of overheating the circuit board pads and possibly lifting one. If the cut leads won't drop out or they don't just stick to the solder wick you can use a small pair of pliers to grab them while they are hot and gently remove them. Take your time and try not to overheat the board. Sometimes it helps to add some solder to the hole and then use solder wick to remove it. The new solder will stick to the old solder and it will all come out at once into the solder wick. Now that the old potentiometers are removed and their circuit board holes are clean and free of solder, we can move on to mounting the new potentiometers. A little dab of hot glue on each new potentiometer holds them in place. I made sure to keep them in a similar order to the old ones. With RV11 on the left and RV21 on the right. Next, I put the circuit board temporarily back in the case to make sure the new potentiometers didn't interfere with the case closing. Here I am measuring the values of the old potentiometers. I need this information so that I'm able to calculate where to set the new potentiometers so that they are somewhat close to where the detector started before the modification. I do some calculations based on the old values and the new values to determine where to set the new potentiometers. Then I set the new potentiometers to the calculated values. This gets them really close to where the old potentiometers were at, normalizing the circuit. This takes a little bit of time, and I took my time to get these values as close as possible. How about a little music while I do this? It's Brad's Laboratory. It's kind of crazy and a little bit weird, but it's going to be awesome sauce because it's Brad's Laboratory. It's Brad's Laboratory So grab a spot, you'll learn a lot Maybe even how to build a robot Cause it's Brad's Laboratory Once the values are set into the pots, the wires can be soldered into the circuit board holes we cleaned out earlier. It is important to get the wires in the right holes. In my case, the yellow wires were the wipers and that is the pointy end of the old pot. Then I use that to determine the wire order. Now that the wires are soldered in, it's time to reassemble the detector leaving it open so we can do a final adjustment on the new potentiometers. Batteries need to be installed so we can power the detector up. RV21 is pretty easy to adjust. Position the coil so it's not detecting any metal. Then tweak the pot up and down while depressing the pinpoint button on the handle until crackling is heard. And then back it off until no sound is heard. Try to get it right on the edge of noise and no noise, leaning just to the no noise. RV11 turned out to be a bit more difficult to adjust. I tried to find a way to adjust it with just a voltmeter, but ultimately I had to hook it up to my oscilloscope and do the adjustment. RV11 controls the amount of voltage from the coil that feeds op-amp U2. 
that chops it into a square waves for further processing. Test points 4 and 5 are the square wave outputs, but we need to adjust the sine wave input from the coil and then it's present on pin 3 of chip U2. Okay, got uh, channel 1 on pin 3 of U2 and I got channel 2 on test point uh, 4, 4 or 5, I can't remember which. It doesn't matter because just one's the invert of the other. Um, and then you can see the scope on the, I'll uh, do a, an inset so you can see the scope picture. And all I'm going to do here is, is adjust uh, the new RV11. Um, if I go down, you'll see my peak voltage starting to drop. 54, 52. I just take that all the way up. 55, 56. What I was seeing was right about 63 was was kind of where 62 and a half, 63 was right there, and you could hear the thing stop 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 beeping when I was turning. So I'm just right at that hairy edge where I want to be at 62 and a half volts peak to peak on that uh, on on uh, U2 pin three. And that's how you adjust that potentiometer. Oh yeah, one more thing. I'm going to just... Um, yeah, let's grab pin 3 again here. And let's take this to um, time 1 over second, which would be frequency. So you can see it's uh, 6.05 kilohertz um, in a frequency that's uh, driving the coil there. Okay, now for a quick lessons learned. If you don't have an oscilloscope, I wouldn't recommend changing RV11 due to the difficult final adjustment. If I was doing this again, I think I would order a 30k ohm potentiometer to replace RV21 and add a 36k ohm resistor to each end. This will keep the overall resistance close to the original value, but provides 10 turns of adjustment in the middle sweet spot. Perhaps a future modification will be to add a gold mode that increases the coil frequency from 6 kHz to 19 kHz or even 71 kHz. Hi, Brad here. Thanks for stopping by my channel and watching this video. If you don't mind clicking the subscribe button down here, I'd really appreciate it. It helps me out with YouTube and it's free for you. Uh, also be sure to leave comments in the, and questions in the, in the comment area. I'm always happy to uh, answer those questions. Thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next video.